Hi, this is Crash Me Twice, and I hope you are having a great day and doing well. I know it has been a while, but getting all the parts in took a bit longer than expected. I finished the project, but because there was so much time involved in this one, that I had to split it in two final parts. And she will be watching part one and a half. In this part, I am going to show how I made the steering damper system, and how I have mounted it to the Warbird rudders. I begin with some basic measurements. I started out by removing the bearings which run on the installed cams and then removed one of the standoffs. I will be using one quarter inch aluminum plate to make a post plate for the damper. I drill and thread a hole to accept the cam bearing post. It will be installed without the original bottom nut, but instead will be bolted directly into the new aluminum plate. The other hole will act as a washer with a longer bolt and goes into the existing standoff. From the bearing shaft, I get rid of three washers and one nut. The remaining nut gets replaced with a lock nut. It's all magic. At the standoff side, the bottom bolt gets replaced with a longer hex bolt, which head I will turn down a bit later to pass by the cam nut below the plate, and one washer is added. The plate is then mounted to the rudder assembly. I roughly draw out the area on the plate which will be cut and machined away later. The post for the steering damper will run in bearings. A pillow bearing on the top of the plate and a recessed 16 by 8 by 5 mm bearing on the bottom side. Pillow bearings are self-adjusting and will angle up on you if you're not guided by additional bearing. I drill all holes to mount the pillow bearing and thread the holes to mount it to. The center hole is exactly 60 mm in diameter to accept the guide bearing. I removed the excess material and shaped the plate. I use files after machining to get a nice final look. I 
I then mount the plate to the rudder assembly and install the bearings and damper post. The post location was measured 58mm from the center of the Whirlpool axle and 32 degrees offset. I calculated this to achieve the most linear action of the damper within the length of the piston movement and inclination into the damper body. I test fit the steering damper to make sure the movement is smooth and at the right location. You can see on the bottom of the plate the installed guide bearing for the damper post. I'm using the set screw which came with the pillow bearing to hold the bolt in place for testing. I'm also using thin washers to get the exact height for the rod end to run on. I then install the Whirlpool cam bearings bolt and use Loctite 243, the blue one. Friend of the channel, Art1 Uno, asked in the comments of part 1 about the cams and spring I'm using. So here it goes. I am using the springs I had from a Mike Scissor suspension boom purchased on eBay quite some time ago. Be aware that they may have changed since. For the cams, I've installed the Whirlpool hard center cams to make the center feel more prominent using the super light springs from the boom. Thanks for the comment, Art1 Uno. All good so far. Time to cut a 40 by 40 aluminum T-slot profile to length. I will be using this to mount the second post which will be holding the steering damper. I am making a center guide to make it easier to adjust my mill to board a slot for the banjo fastener. I will also save me some time in the future. The 1316's end mill will be used for the fastener bore. On the 4040 profile, I'm only boring a hole on one side. On the other, I will be using a 90 degree angle fastener. Otherwise, the strength of the 4040 will be compromised by quite a big margin. I am measuring the height for the second damper post. I make this post from 6061 aluminum stock. I cut the correct lengths plus a few millimeters to allow for cleaning up the ends with the mill. My trusty bandsaw get a workout again. I am drilling the holes for the bolts which will attach the post to the T-slot profile. 
20 millimeter in, obviously half of 40 millimeter for the 40-40 profile. I then create pockets for the bolt heads to make this look sharp. I'm using quarter inch aluminum plates for the top section on which the second rod and post lives. After cutting it roughly to shape, I machine it to the correct size. To mount the plate, I drill and tap three holes into the post. Back to the plate, I drill three 1 8 inch holes and then drill them out to 5 mm. I don't have a 5 mm collet for the mill and so I'm using a smaller drill and work the rest out in the drill press. These are then chamfered. Now I put the holes for the second pillow bearing, just like previously for the plate on the rudder assembly. The pocket for the guide bearing is also bored. Some material removed to make it pretty. And the guide bearing is then pressed into the pocket. And of course I didn't have the right length fold and I had to make one. I slotted the post to make it lighter and also look a bit more fancy. And here's my dirty sounds up. Now it's time to put it all together. I'm at the finish line with the assembly and it will work just as it is. But next time in the last and final part I will make some changes to the damper itself and with that I will be completing the damper mod with some fine tuning followed by the final install to my sim pit. I hope you all enjoyed part one and a half of this build and I hope I earned a like from you. Crash me twice, out. <laughs>